So now in this video we're going to look at an LED chaser here. We're using the 4017. It is being clocked with the 555 timer right there. So right when the output of the 555 timer goes high, you can tell by the red LED lighting up right there. Right when it goes high, that's a high input and the next LED lights up. It's chasing because it's a one LED following the other that is lighting up. Once we get to the bottom here, LED 9, it jumps back to LED 0. So I know we got uh, wires all over the place, but we got the 555 timer right there, NE555. It's wired in a stable mode. So it's mostly this 100,000 ohm resistor, a little bit with the 10,000 ohm resistor, setting the output timing high and low right there, 10 microfarad capacitor. It's just going to keep alternating between high and low as long as power is applied. When the output is high, the red LED will light up. doesn't get 5 full volts, but uh, close enough. And uh, when the output is low, then the blue LED lights up. And moving over here, we have the clock pin right there. Pin 14. You can see the jumper going there. So I added a 10,000 ohm resistor, 10K resistor in series. I don't know if you need it or not, but unfortunately I fried one of these when I powered it up. So um, that's when I had the output directly to it. So I decided I'll just add a 10K resistor uh, just to help protect the 4017. And then we have these two pins. I think you may be able to connect them directly to ground, but I added a 10K just uh, in case. The uh, pin 15 there, that's the reset pin up there. Uh, if we uh, give a high input so we could add a switch to a positive supply then it's going to reset this bring the LED right back uh, to zero the pin 13 there is enable again we may be able to connect it directly to the ground but to help make sure I don't fry it I put a 10k resistor there so a low input there uh, ground keeps it enabled if we give it a high input that will disable it. The LED will stop wherever it is, even though we keep giving high inputs to the clock pin. And over here we can start seeing the layout of the LEDs. So output zero actually goes to pin three, and uh, output one actually goes to pin two. It's a bit annoying. They don't uh, order the uh, outputs in line with the uh, pins, but uh, you got to look at the pin layout and find where zero is and connect it there. So I gave each one of my LEDs its own protective resistor, 1K each. They're blue. They get uh, pretty bright even at uh, low currents. Um, other people I see, they put the anode of the LED directly to the output and they tie together all the cathodes to one resistor there, but I didn't do that. And just jumping down, you can see we work our way down to uh, output number 9. Again, they're not in order when it comes to the pins. It's a bit annoying, but it is what it is. We have also uh, pin 8 here. That is a supply pin. You may not see that on the schematic. But we are using 5 volts to power the circuit. Pin 16 is to the positive supply, 5 volts. Just like the 555 timer is 5 volts. And over here I drew out the uh, pin layout. So even though you can see that uh, the pins are next to each other when it comes to the outputs, their orders are uh, way out of order. So top left is a 1, work your way down to 8. That's a supply pin, that's commonly where they are um, for the uh, negative supply. Usually it's that bottom left and then positive supply is the top right. This one you can actually see the pin numbers are pretty good. This is the one that uh, fried. Maybe it was already bad when I got it, I don't know. But it was definitely fried when I wired it up. So it's the 4017. Uh, before the uh, part number, a lot of times you see letters. That usually means manufacturer, but it uh, looks like this is a generic brand. So they took somebody else's, maybe it's uh, Texas Instruments uh, letters, and uh, uh, added that to the part number. But uh, it's definitely generic with that symbol there. Uh, so maybe it's just poor quality. And then BE there, that means it's an enhanced version. Um, but again, if it's generic, maybe it doesn't live up to those standards. But in any case, you can see the part numbers are way out of order. So you got to consult uh, really carefully with the uh, pin layout, usually on a data sheet. And then we got our other uh, pins there. Carry out is for uh, giving high and low signals to other circuitry based on where the output is. 
And finally, we have the circuitry. So ground is going to the uh, cathode, of course, for the LEDs. And uh, I got these little jumpers to go to the cathode of the other LEDs, the short lead, because I ran out of uh, gray jumpers for all of them. But in any case, long lead, the anode of each of them comes to a resistor right there. Um, the, every LED has its own two rows right there. None of them are sharing the same uh, rows. But the LED coming to the jumper, which ultimately this is 9 here. So if we follow this really long uh, blue one, we'll make our way to the uh, 9 pin. And I think this one down here is 8 right there. The orange one coming to the 8th. Uh, it's actually the ninth LED because it starts with 0. Um, but that's the number 8 uh, LED coming to the number 8 output. So in any case, this was a real pain to a wire. And if I was going to make, uh, I'm probably going to look for them actually. Uh, just a circuit board that already has the 4017 on there and they already did all the wiring and stuff where zero the will probably be a pin or something will be on top and it will work its way down to a pin nine right there where they already put it in order for you because this was a pain as you can see there's wires all over the place and stuff um somebody could easily make a circuit board where it's all in one small little package so i'm actually going to look for that um but in any case when it comes to these uh, chasers where uh, it's just one output after another and there's some modifications you can make but it looks like everybody pretty much just uses the 4017 so it's a good one good integrated circuit to pick up